Hi all and welcome to my channel Fred Makes Things. Today we are doing another uh, sewing video. Um, I'm going to do this video a little bit differently because I am not certain how this is going to go um, and I thought I would take you along on this journey that I'm going to take if that makes sense. Um, this is part one of a two part series that we, which is also a little bit different for the, for my uh, content. So today is, oh, I, today is Wednesday, March 30th. Um, and we're talking about the first half of the project. Then I'm going to be posting on uh, Monday, uh, April 4th, uh, the second half of this project. Because the first half requires sewing and the second half is more crafting. So uh, yeah, we're going to play around with that a little bit. Um, yeah, all right. So, um, if you have seen my Buy Nothing Project, uh, video explaining what the Buy Nothing Project is, you might have seen this book before. Um, I got this as part of the Buy Nothing Project, a Facebook group for neighbors to gift each other items that they have that they may not necessarily need anymore or use or want or, you know, things like that. Um, you can check out that video if you like. I'll leave it uh, as a card here and on the uh, end screen for you. Um, but yeah, so this book is full of interesting patterns or fab uh, things that one can make. Um, I went through, marked a couple of things that I like, um, but today we are going to be looking at this guy here. I, I put my measuring tape in so that I could reach the page easier. But uh, this is called the Ken Zashi clock. And basically it's a clock that has flower petals, right? It's a flower clock. Now I'm not going to make a clock out of it. What I am going to do is make a whole bunch of flowers out of it using um, the petals that they show you in here. They show you on the on this page here, I don't know if you can see that here, how to make the petals. Um, and then you would attach them to like a center section. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a whole bunch of petals to make a whole bunch of smaller flowers. I'm thinking the flowers are going to end up about this big, uh, I hope. Um, and then I'm going to attach them to something else, not a clock. So instead of making one big flower, I'm going to make a whole bunch of smaller ones. Um, and so this is step one, talking to you about it. Um, then for step two, um, I am going to, um, make the flowers and I'm going to try to show you how I make, put the petals together. Uh, step three will then be like Step two, we'll be putting the petals together and kind of walking you through how I did that, I think. Uh, step three, we'll be putting the flowers together. Uh, and then I'm sure step four is going to be some sort of sign off for today and hints at what the future brings. But I'm not there yet. Normally I have these videos better planned than this. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to go for now and I will be back in a little bit. Okay. So before I actually start working on this project, I thought I'd show you what I'm working with. Shocking. It's turquoise or teals. So I picked up these 
two charm packs at Joanne, um, I want to say in October or something. They were on clearance for $3.47. This uh, patterned one comes with 30 squares and this solid one, some greens and stuff in it too, comes with 40 squares. So my initial plan is to do about 50 or about 10 flowers each having five petals. So I plan on using 50 of these. Um, but if I need more or I want to vary up the sizes, I also have these. I have this scrap from my February revisit um, Sewers Club project revisit. And I could cut that down into four right and get uh, something slightly larger um, and then I have these extra pieces from um, my uh, or September pattern uh, alternate pattern uh, toss cushion project right and then I also have this bundle of four right which is part of this bundle that I could cut up too if I need more fabric. But for now, I'm going to try to just focus on those two. So now it's time to show you how to do the petals. So you take a square like this, right? These are the charm squares I just talked about. Um, they are already cut so that they can't fray. But if you are cutting your own squares, you can either use pinking shears to keep them from fraying, or you can just do a zigzag stitch when you're stitching it. Um, so from here, from your square, you're going to fold it in half along the diagonal to make a triangle like this. Then you're going to sew along your open sides, right? Your cut sides, whatever you want to call it here, right? Leaving your folded edge alone. From there, you're going to have this shape here, right? You can see that it's all sewn along here, along the two edges. I left this edge loose. So you're going to take your triangle like this, right? You're going to fold your two corners into your middle corner. Or I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. But you're going to pull both of your tips of your triangle up to your middle tip like this. They should match or be pretty close to matching. All right, so now you've made yourself a square, okay? Then you're going to fold your two folded edges in to each other to make a smaller triangle. So here's your original triangle, here's your smaller triangle, right? And then you're going to sew along the seam you already did before leaving your two other sides empty. So just along the one side here, just to secure all of your layers, that is going to end up looking like this, right? So you see only your one side is sewn. This side is open. You can see inside all of your folds, right? And you have like, a triangle. From this point, you're going to open up right the space here that you have your cone, turn it inside out like this, leaving the bottom section inside like this, right? You want to leave some so you have like a base of the petal, right? You still have your open cone on this side. And now you have these three folds on your top, right? 
So you have this here. Here's your seam. Your um, three folded pieces on this side. And the tip of your one side of your triangle inside. From there, you're just going to flatten it out and create a petal. So here's your top part of your petal. You can shape this any way you want to. I'm probably gonna leave them a little rounder, a little flatter, like that. So here's the top side of your petal. Here's the interior, right, with your folded seam, right, your exterior seam. And now you can attach a bunch of different petals together to make a flower. All right, uh, I'll come back next to show you how to assemble the flower, I guess. So last time we chatted, I was showing you how to arrange the little triangles, the little petals, right? So I've made all of the petal pieces, right? Here they are. They've all been uh, coordinated into flower families, petal families. I've organized them so that I know which colors are going with which flowers, basically. Um, and I've started hand stitching some of them. So this is what they are starting to look like. So um, we'll do this one here. So what I have been doing is I've been stitching three uh, whip stitches or whatever, um, like coming in one side, going around to the other side, right? Just joining them here. Uh, using three stitches and here using three stitches and I've just kind of been running the thread up and back and then I run the thread through the base of the petal to get it to kind of sit nice and tight together um, depending on what I'm how close I'm paying attention some of them are quite like a bit tighter than the others. This one's really loose, but I think it's because the thread for this one is stiff. Like the fabric for this one is stiff. So, so far I've hand stitched five of them and I have five more to go. From there, I have to figure out what I'm doing with the interior. I thought, I thought at first it was going to be a button. Um, because I have a million buttons, but now I'm thinking of trying to do something with the, the brown felt that I bought. So yeah, um, check back when everything is, um, well, when all of the flowers are finished and when I figure out how I'm doing the interior. Okay, so now that all of the flowers have been made, they all look something like this guy here. We're gonna show you, or I'm gonna talk about how I did this interior. Um, at first I was going to use buttons, but I didn't really like how the buttons were looking. So I switched over to this. So what I did first was I took my brown felt, cut it widthwise, it looks like, um, into one inch strips. From there, I folded the one inch strips in half and sewed them across one side. Then from there, I um, did little tiny um, snips along it and then I'm going to 
cut one length into two like this. Now we have enough for two flowers, right? And then from there, we just roll it up like this, keeping your bottom nice and flat. So that you come oop, so that you come out with a shape like this then this one's already done I secured it using a couple of stitches so I just ran my needle through one side to the other and back again to keep it in together right like this then all I did is I slide it into here and then on the back I do a couple of stitches to secure so like on this one you can see a bit that I've secured it to each and every petal like that and so now it's not going to go anywhere so I have one down nine more to go okay so all ten of the flowers are done now and we're just doing the backs. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just, I've taken some scrap uh, green felt that I had left over and I cut some squares, like one and a half inch squares out of them that I then cut into circles. I put two little holes into them so that I can feed a um, cut up piece of uh, pipe cleaner and then what I'm doing is I'm using a bit of hot glue to attach them to the backs of the flowers so I'm going to use this part to um, cover up all of my mess right and also to give me something to use to work with later on on part two of this project so I have two done and dry um, a couple strung and then I just have to cut out the last of them and string them so to show you what I'm doing we'll do it on the back of this guy I flatten it out a little bit I take my glue gun, put some glue down on each one. I have fabric glue somewhere and that was originally how I was going to attach these, but I can't find the fabric glue. And then I go like this, push it down, trying not to burn myself, burnt myself. there we go so then on the other side once they've cooled you can't even really tell right that they're there and then when I attach them to the thing I'm going to attach them to I don't think you can you won't even be able to see so yeah um, I'm nearly there what I'm going to do is finish up all of these guys and then I will come back um, and show you each of the flowers and sign off. Okay, so um, gluing them together didn't take me very long. So it's only like, I don't know, a half an hour or so from when I finished gluing them to now. Um, so I just wanted to go over the materials that I talked about at the beginning, um, what I used and what I didn't use. So at the beginning, I said I had a whole bunch of these charm squares, right, that I picked up um, from a charm pack. 
Um, and I have this many left. So there's one, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, five colors left. So I have 20 of these guys left. I think one. Yeah, I have 20 of these guys left. Um, I didn't use anything that lent itself too close to green. So I have the greens left, basically. Um, I didn't end up using any of the extra material I mentioned that I had. I didn't need to cut out any extra squares. Um, I can always revisit this if I need to, but I have extras of, I didn't have to touch any of this, which is nice. Um, the two thread colors that I used were this blue, it's from France, so I don't know what color it would be um, in the Guterman stuff, but it's like a nice light blue, kind of tealy, but not quite. So um, I have some of this left. You can start to see the shape of the spool in it though. So yeah, um, hand stitching all of the 10 flowers together kind of um, made this go down really fast. And then I have this brown. This is left over from uh, my uh, bowl cozy things that I did in January. So I used these to attach, I used these to sew the brown interior section of the flowers and then to attach the flowers or to attach that brown section to the flower. Um, I used three and a third of these green pipe cleaners. Um, these are going to be used in Monday's project as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, I used, I would say about half. Yeah, I used about half of this brown for the interior of the um, flowers. Um, I didn't touch these two green pieces. Uh, these are going to be used again in Monday's video. Um, and for the backings, I used some scrap of this green here that I've had for Lord knows how long. Sorry about the coloring. I'm in my dining room and I didn't go get my filming light. Um, yeah, so this brown was 42 cents or 45 cents or something like that. So I used like 20 cents of this, like a couple cents of these. I don't have, remember how much these pipe cleaners were. Um, five dollars of fabric maybe um, and some thread um, I'll do the math up and flash it up on the screen for you to let you know how many like how much each one of these flowers cost me um, and also roughly how much time they took I can tell you now that the part of these that took the longest was the um, Uh, hand stitching of them. So now I'll show you what they all turned out looking like. I'm going to put like flowers together and you'll see what I mean when I line them up. Okay, so how I ended up making these flowers, I may have said this already, I'm not sure. Um, is that in that original patterned charm pack, I had three of the pattern and I wanted to make five petal flowers. So I took three of that pattern and then two solid. 
Um, and then in the solid charm pack that I had, I had four of each color. So for every two flowers, I did two of the same color. These don't match, right? So these two here have the same coordinating um, greeny turquoise color. These two have the same coordinating, right? These two, these two, these two, right? They're all the same kind of coordinating fabrics. Um, I used all of my patterned fabric. Um, and then, like I said, I used five colors from the charm pack to make these. So I think, I think you can see them all on here. Um, some of them are quite dark. Some of them are quite light. All of them have their little things attached to the back. Um, some glue hanging off of them. And yeah, so there you have it. Hopefully this video kind of makes sense for you. Hopefully. Um, I filmed them over three or four days. So anyway, what do you think of these flowers? Do you like them? Um, they're turquoise and I be making a lot of turquoise stuff lately. I think for my next uh, choose my own adventure project, um, I'm going to get away from blues and turquoises. Um, I don't know what Sewers Club is going to present to me next week, so it might be in the same family. Um, I know the video after that is blue and white, um, but my next choose my own color palette, I might go try to uh, get away from this stuff just for a little bit. It's been a lot of turquoise and blue lately. Um, do you have a favorite one of these flowers? Is there like a grouping that you like more than another one? Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, do you like this gray? I wasn't sure about it because it's kind of like a bluey gray. I think it, I think I like it, but I, I'm not sure. So yeah, um, this isn't the last you're going to see of these. Um, come back on Monday. Uh, I don't know what day that is because I, I don't have a calendar handy. But uh, come back on Monday and you can see uh, how the, uh, and you can see what exactly it is I am going to make with them. Um, subscribe and then it'll just pop right up for you. Nice and easy. Um, like the video if you've made it this far as always. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will talk with you again soon. Bye.